<laughs> okay, we're live. Hello, good morning. We're Bonnie and Thomas Leota with Creating Champions for Life. And today we are going over the Parenting Path to Paradise Part 2. We're going to talk about guiding behavior. And so if you're watching us on a different platform, maybe you're on YouTube or LinkedIn or Instagram, uh, if you go to our profile, you'll be able to see a link to join us in our free group, Raising Healthy, Happy Cooperative Kids, where we go live every single week sharing the absolute best parenting tips. Well, that is the best parenting tips if you want healthy, happy, cooperative kids, I guess. And we're going to, we're actually challenging beliefs, current parenting beliefs and giving you new, empowering, proactive, uplifting, positive beliefs so that you can get the corresponding results. So I want to say good morning to those who are live with us here today. Chrissy, Celine, and Don, welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here for participating and thank you for watching the replay. Mm -hmm. All right, so today we're talking about guiding behavior. You also might need this PDF form for yourself so you can go ahead and see where you're at on your parenting path to paradise. So can you show them what the PDF looks like? So if you don't have a copy of this PDF, then post a comment underneath this video and I will make sure to uh, private message you a copy of this PDF. All right, so we're getting started. And first of all, I want to say this. We have been operating with beliefs that we need to do something negative in order to teach our ch child. So we walk in, they're doing something we don't like, we get angry, we get a negative emotion, and then we believe that we have to do something negative to teach our children a lesson. How many of us have used timeouts, for instance? We go in and we take away their favorite toy or their favorite thing. Or we say, oh, you colored on the couch, no TV for a week. And so what does TV have to do with coloring on the couch? And how is the child going to learn if you drag them over to a timeout for hitting their brother or sister? Oh, no hitting. We don't do that. We drag them to a timeout. We make them sit there for two to five minutes as they cry or whatever. How positive does that feel dragging your child over to a timeout? taking their toy away? How positive does it feel to you? Because we call this positive parenting. Because a hundred years ago, if a child did something you didn't like, then you were taught to literally beat them with switches, lock them in closets. They would sit in the classroom with logs on their back as a form of physical torture. So in the early 1940s, we were taught to kiss and cuddle and respond to our child's every need. We were taught that all children require our massive amounts of attention. And I've seen also online that they have like a power cap. <laughs> Your child has a power cap and they want all the power and they crave attention and it's their job to push your buttons. And we're going to challenge all of those beliefs today. What if your child was just a mini you? a little mini human being who wanted to make beautiful artwork. And so they take the marker and they color all over your white couch. And in their mind, they're making something amazing, something that they, they're they proud of. And so when you come in as the parent and you're like, oh, my stars, like, we don't do that. And you take the crayon away and you punish them for coloring on your couch. Do they learn how they can color, how they can make beautiful artwork? in a way that you can still be happy, right? If we drag them to a timeout, we don't hit. How are they going to learn how to get what they want without hitting their sister? Can you see what we're saying here? If you can see, and this makes so much sense, like the child can be sitting there having no idea how the world works. Dr. John Locke in the 17th century said that all children are born. We are all born. All human beings come into this world with blank slate, like which means they're their canvas of their mind is blank, mm -hmm. which means they have zero neural pathways. They have no habits, no idea how the world works, no idea where to color, not a clue what a manner is, not a clue what it means when you say sit straight up in your chair. They don't know what it means unless you actually show them what it means to sit straight up in your chair. So we're into the second phase of your parenting path to paradise. And we're talking about guiding behavior. And so what's in the first um, guiding behavior? <laughs> if I can remember what was on the PDF, we would be doing really well. Oh, the carrot. That's right. Mm -hmm. The carrot. <laughs> the carrot. So show them what that looks like. So if you have the PDF, 
write the carrot up right in that spot there in the top right hand corner, the first column. This is the carrot. And the reason why we call it the carrot is because we all have this image of the carrot dangling in front of the donkey, the donkey, the mule, right? We want to, we want to dangle a carrot. So it continues to walk going towards the carrot, but we would call this a bribe. So you want to talk about the difference between a bribe and a goal? Absolutely. Absolutely. Once again, welcome everyone. So glad you're here and also seeing the replay. But when we think about guiding the behavior, this is the opposite of punishment. We're guiding it. And so when we look about one of the first three accelerators, which makes guiding behavior become your strongest ally, think of the word carrot. Could it be used as in front of the donkey? If you've ever worked with a mule, stubborn as can be. Do you think our little geniuses, our little offspring can get stubborn too? And so we got to have a bribe. A carrot could be put in front and be like, ang, ang, ang. And then, and then it just leads them along. The opposite of that is what if the carrot was their passion? Oh man, I want one of those so much. I was just like Bugs Bunny. I want my carrot. And it was actually their want, need, or desire, which is what we call a goal. This is something that was in rooted inside, coming from the inside out. And between me and you, nobody's going to stop them, if you know what I mean. And so a carrot could be used as a bribe, which is like punishment, or it could be identified as their goal. And what do I do to work towards it? And this is all about knowing their reward. Yeah, somewhere along the way, I don't know, we've as parents, as a society, as a whole, We've developed this habit to bribe our kids. Hey, if you do this for me, if you clean the kitchen, you can have this or whatever. And I just want to point out that bribing, if you bribe a police officer, you get a ticket. And if you bribe a judge, uh, what happens? Does anybody know ha what happens when you try to bribe a judge in the real world? What happens? And so that right there should tell us that anytime we teach, every time we bribe our child, we're teaching them that bribing is the way to go, except for now when they become an adult, we have to go, no, 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 don't bribe a cop because you'll, you'll get arrested, right? <laughs> it's illegal. So why do we think it's okay to do in parenting? So when I first met Tom, every single one of my kids, I have four kids. I had a three level house, seven bedrooms. And so that they could each have their own bedroom, right? That was so important to me was to give them a good life and make sure that they knew how loved they were and to lavish them with all sorts of things. And so every single bedroom was set up like a Toys R Us. They each had their own Nintendo DS. They had karaoke machines. They had computers. They had everything under the sun that you can think of. And Zachary's room, my youngest, was literally filled from, you know, up to your knees through the whole bedroom full of toys. And I had absolutely zero control in my home. They literally stole everything. They would, I have to ask permission to go into my office to work on my computer because they'd be on there with their feet up on the desk. You know what I'm talking about, right? You go, you can't even watch TV because they've taken ownership of the TV and there was zero respect of a massive amount of sibling riv rivalry. They didn't seem to like me or respect me at all. I felt like I did everything under the sun to help my kids and mm, zero gratitude. So when I met Tom and the kids would ask for something, they'd be like, hey, can I play Angry Birds on your phone? And he'd go, write this down. This is a gold nugget. He'd go, oh, I would love for you to play Angry Birds on my phone. What's one thing you could do to be, put a big smile on your mom's face that would earn you 10 minutes to play on my phone? Now, like I said, they had access to computers, games. They had an Xbox. They had everything under the sun. They each had their own cell phone, but they needed to play Angry Birds on Tom's phone. And I was like, for like two months going, why, what is so special about Tom's phone? And then I clued in to, he was giving them a goal to work towards something that they wanted, something that they had asked for. He gave them a goal to work towards. And I'm telling you what, the joy is in the journey, not the destination. The joy is in the creating of something. 
aren't you most excited when you're working towards maybe the final timelines of I'm getting a new car? You're so excited. You're willing to work overtime and do all this extra thing so that you can have a brand new car. This is the difference between offering a bribe and knowing your child's goals. My children used to have goals for garlic bread with dinner because garlic bread is a privilege and not a right. So talk about that before we move to the second mm -hmm. section. Talk about what is a privilege and what is a right. Yeah, this is so powerful. Really is. And by body, you just explained it such so well that the moms around the world are going to go, where have you been my whole life? They got to go, oh, yes, <laughs> goals. Our kids right? can actually work towards goals. Right, just like we did, right? And you can feel it in your heart because you know it's right. Yeah. So when you think about that carrot, well, this is what's neat is we have rights and privileges. And so we kind of draw the line here where what if we actually had three rights as our little genius self comes here in physical form on earth? and pick our parents as our trusted advisor. And our trusted advisors go, okay, I'm gonna give you a baseline. You're gonna have some basic food, some basic clothes, and some basic shelter. Kind of like when you go camping, just the bare necessities, and those are your rights. Now, everything else, like designer shoes, or designer clothes, or seven course meals, or having a princess, Bed, bedroom set with uh, a touchable slide, you know, these would all be called privileges. It's not something that you have to have, but it's something that you want, or maybe even better yet, oh, I desire that. Oh, I would love one of those. And we all have those moments. So if we could draw the line in the sand of free rights and everything else that they wanted, needed, or even desired could be a privilege well, what does that really mean? Well, in our great animal kingdom, we know that there's tons of birds out there that must get out of the nest to go get the worms. There's always more enough for everyone, but there's no delivery. Mm. So what if our kids had to actually get up and do something just like you did? That's the secret. The magic is in monkey see, monkey do. Not do as I tell you to do but don't do as i do that's the backwards one so anything was like well when i set up the stage instead of it as they were thought everything in the house was right right because it was bribe 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 you start taking that entitlement and you're like well you better offer me at least 40 bucks so i don't get off the couch yeah right this way it was like oh there's a challenge there's a puzzle and there's always a solution. Every genius knows there's a solution to puzzles. So he's like, I shared my goal. I want to play in your phone. Love for you to do that. We call that a goal. And those are either a right or a privilege. Playing on the phone is definitely a privilege. So what do we got to do? We get to do something first and then it shows up kind of like a light switch. So in this case, I kids are so smart. They know what puts a frown or a smile on your face with the things they do. Why? As they do this, they see that cause and effect. So I just asked them, hey, what's one thing you know that you could do right now that puts a smile on mom's face? And sure enough, he went, boom, came back. And I'm like, huh, well, let's test her out. Hey, Bonnie, come here. Check this out. Look what Zach did right there. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, what did, what's, what's on the face? And sure enough, there's a smile on mom's face. And that's why he got his goal, because it was something that he got a chance to work towards. And that's what our kids have been asking ever since they could get on their two legs and start running. Mm -hmm. Okay. So absolutely. So now you you know that like, think about it. So Daniela, I used to have this exact same thing. When I first met Tom, my 12 year old would not get out of bed and go to school. <laughs> Actually, I, I met him when, when um, Jacob was in grade eight. So at the end of grade seven, maybe the last month or so, he just wouldn't get out of bed and go to school. And then the beginning of grade eight, we had summer holidays, beginning of grade eight, same thing. I tried taking his blanket, tickling, joking, yelling. I mean, I got mad. I called dad, grandma, grandpa, like any everything. And this kid would just, you know, I'd pull him out of bed. He'd crawl back in. I'd take the blanket. He'd get another one. It was crazy. And so I phoned Tom and I'm like, hey, um, my teenager won't get out of bed and go to school. And he goes, oh, does he have a cell phone? This is what we're talking about here, the carrot, right? He goes, oh, does he have a cell phone? And uh, I go, 
yeah, yeah, he does. And he goes, well, who pays for the cell phone? And I went, oh my gosh, I pay for the cell phone. He's got a cell phone. He won't go down to school. So I just went downstairs and this is the power of creating champions for life. This is, you might want to go back and watch part one to create the foundational beliefs for today's video. But the thing is, is that our children are little human beings and they have goals and they have desires and they want to have responsibility and purpose in their lives. And so for 13 years, I told them what to do, what to eat, what to pack for vacation. I packed their bags. I made all the plans. I did everything. And I never allowed them the opportunity to step up. So our teenagers now, they're bigger. They've got more of a voice. You can't physically drag them to a timeout anymore because when Jacob was 13, he stood a foot taller than me. I mean, physically couldn't get him out of bed. Anyway, so I went downstairs and I said, look, and this is where it's controversial. This is where you're going to go, oh my, no, I don't That's think so. Rub. Because I realize you're a human being and you need to have your own desire to get up and to go to school. And so I go downstairs and I go, look at, I have my education, I have my business, I have my life. You're, you know, if this is your life. You get to choose what you want. So, but I tell you what, from here on out, you choose to not go to school one day. You're saying, hey, mom, I'd like you to take my phone for the weekend. Okay. Second choice is the second day that you choose not to go to school, you're going, mom, I want you to phone the phone company and suspend my phone for two weeks. The third time, the third day you go, oh, I'm just going to sleep. I'm not going to go to school. You're saying, mom, I'm choosing for you to never pay for my cell phone ever again. And then you can get a job and go get your own cell phone. Fair enough. And I got up and I left. This was just at the very beginning. And it was just like, my heart's racing. And I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen here. I got up and I left. I'm like, fair enough. He goes, fair enough. So I left him to his own. And he made the decision to do what? What do you think? Put in the comments, what decision do you think Jacob made at the age of 13 when I laid out a plan? I gave him three choices with his cell phone. This, this, or this. What do you think he chose? And I'm going to give you, I know there's a little bit of a lag in the commenting there, I just asked the question on the comment, <laughs> on the comment, so you should be able to comment now. What do you think he chose? All of you, put in your answer. Did he choose to sleep in more and not go to school? He went to school. This is <laughs> universal truths we're talking about here. Our children have desires. If I said, uh, if you don't go to school, you don't get your cell phone, <sighs> that wouldn't have had the same impact. But I created a plan, gave him three choices, and allowed him to choose. And I'm going to tell you what, he went to school every single day. I never, ever had to ever say one more word to him after that. He graduated high school. He's 24. Yesterday, he just turned 24, or sorry, Tuesday, just turned 24. And he is a full-time manager at Costco. He's been supervising there since the age of 21. And they just turn out to amazing uh, he went to school. He went to school the third day after you laid the plans down. He got up and went to school within five minutes after that conversation, right? There's things in our house that are rights, food, clothes, and shelter. And there's things in our home that are privileges. And as an example, my teenager gets up every morning. He makes his bed. He does his chore. He does everything that he's supposed to do, his morning routine. And then he gets Wi-Fi. You see, because if we just allow Wi-Fi in the morning, he'll play all night on his games and not get up in the morning and go, I don't really care. But because he needs to do his things first, just like we need to go to work first before we get a paycheck, he needs to do his things first. And then the Wi-Fi gets turned on. It's a very simple. All right. So, I mean, it's not simple because we were never, we were never taught. We were taught to bribe, dictate, yell, get angry. We were taught all these things, but we've never been taught until now how to empower our children with their own goals, with their own desires. And that's what motivates them. And that's their fuel to move mm -hmm. forward. So we're going to move on. Okay. If you have any questions about this, post them in the comments below, send us a private message. And also if you're loving what we're teaching, but you need some help navigating and you want to create a customized game plan, send us a message or even just comment underneath this video and we'll get in touch with you to help you make your own plan. All right. Your own customized game plan. Uh -huh. So we're going to move on, show them what this is. Okay. We're going to move on to the maze. The maze is the middle part of section two, all about guiding behavior versus punishment. And so this, the maze goes kind of with the reward, but if we know 
if we know that Wi-Fi is a privilege and television is a privilege and garlic bread with dinner is a privilege and not a right, then this part is going to be way easier for you, the maze. At every single moment, you have a choice to make as you go throughout your day. Do I get up in the morning and drink two glasses of water before I have my coffee or do I have my coffee without the glass of water? I mean, er at every single point, there are going to be choices. Now, if your child is hitting the sister, let's say that you have a son and he keeps hitting his sister uh, and we keep telling him, don't hit, we don't hit, we drag him to a timeout. He's still never not learning the life skills he needs to get what he wants, which is causing the anger, which is causing him to hit. Every, everything that happens, every circumstance has a cause. There's a law of cause and effect, right? And so when we can start to see that the hitting of the sister is an effect to a cause and we can figure out what the cause is, is your son has a want, need or desire that's not being met. He has a voice that's not being heard. And it's kind of like you, if you say, I want to go buy some new shoes. And I say, no, we can't buy new shoes. No, because we, we're going on vacation. You know, we're spending all this money. You cannot have new shoes, but I really want new shoes. Nope, no way, no how, because I said so. Would you get angry at me? Would you be like, well, can't you tell me how I can get the shoes? And so the maze, well, you explain the maze. I could just sure. talk through the whole thing. <laughs> give you a turn to talk. Oh, I love the way you explain it because you're the mom's mom of the whole world. You are the cat's meow of how this actually works. And every mom is loving your story Great. and duplicating. <laughs> but when you look at the maze, it's about, it's all about the psychology of one answer is like a dictation take it or leave it. Then there's the two options, which often causes conflict and confusion. Okay. Do I go right or left? I don't know which one, but when you add the third option in the maze forward, left or right, when you get three choices, it allows you to authentically look at it and go, I'm actually making decisions in training. I have what is called a choice free will. I could either make it better, make it worse, or keep it right there in the same. And so when you look at a maze, we all know there's a start and a finish, kind of like happy birthday, happy transition day. And as we go from beginning to end, you're going to be going constantly always forward. And you find out that there's three options every single step of the way. Oh, do I go right? Do I go left or go forward? You see, if we tell them where to go, then they never do the maze without you. But if you can set it up, three parent approved type of options. And let's just go with vegetables at dinner. We know that that's something that's important that they must eat. So we don't ask them to eat vegetables, but we know back in the day that they used to go, well, I caught them eating corn one time, carrots. And, you know, I didn't even believe it, but somehow they liked peas. This is something you know that they've ate in the past. And so what kind of vegetable would you like tonight to have with dinner? Peas, corn, or carrots? And they're going to go, hmm, well, I'm not being dictated to, and I get a choice. You mean I, my, my opinion actually starts to count now? Yes. It's called decisions in training. So that is how it always works. Hmm. Well, I want corn. Now, between me and you, mom, dad, do you really care which vegetable they eat? Honestly, your job is to teach them that vegetables are important allowing them to choose which one it would be gives them that authentic feeling of I'm making decisions in training. And it takes a long time to make decisions because they need life experiences. So if I go right, mm, didn't like that one. But if I went left, that one gave me a better choice. Mm. It knows that you're always going to find wrong where you go, but there's always right. And it's the idea to build up perseverance, to keep on keeping on and setting up the maze so they can have choices to pick from. Feels like they're kind of in the driver's seat when really they're just on your lap and you're holding the steering wheel down below. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, I just want to touch on some of the comments. So Don, you said, I wonder, I wonder what's, what did you say something about the bribe? I wonder when it's considered a bribe. It's considered a bribe when you bring something up, like, you know, you know, they like to watch TV. So you're like, well, I'll let you have TV if you do this. It's just something that you're offering because you want them to do something more than they want 
to do something, uh-huh. if that makes sense. So, so I knew that Jacob already had a cell phone, right? And so if I knew what I know now, we would have had a plan before a cell phone and he would have had a, you know, he would have had a way to pay for his cell phone, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And they all had cell phones, you know, for Christmas one year, they all got their own cell phone. They were like five to 10 or something like that. And so I fell into the trap as well. Now I just sit back. I don't offer them anything. When I go out, I don't buy them extra little clothes or little things. I sit back patiently, patient parent, and I wait for them to desire something. And when they desire something, then it's like, oh, that's awesome. That's called a goal. I'd love for you to be that, have that, do that. Now you're coming together. You're working with your child as a team. You're on their side because your job is to help your children discover their purpose, is to help your children learn all these characteristics as you parent them through life. See, I see so many uh, classes like um, right now on Facebook here's a a class for six to 10 year olds on how to manage your emotions. But you know, if you parented in this way, I like to say the way God intended, because whether you're religious or not, let's just look at this scenario. We are human beings. They say that God is like our parent. He creates this environment for us to live in. We could be homeless heroin addicts, or we could be wealthy entrepreneurs. God loves us just the same. He just sits up there. He gave us the environment. He says, you choose. You choose to think what you think about. You choose the actions. If you steal a car, you go to jail. It's all drawn out. We know we know this. Now, most of us aren't taught that thoughts become things unless we get into personal development. We start learning these things because we are all born with a blank canvas. None of us have any idea how the world works unless we actually engage and we learn it. But your children will learn persistence. They'll learn delayed gratification. They'll learn how to navigate through disappointment because they will have a goal. You will create the plan for them. It's called the maze. Would you like to wear these socks, these socks, or these socks before you put your shoes on, little Timmy? Ooh, I want these socks. Good choice. Look how smart you are. And it's just this flow of continual of empowerment in language, in choices, and everything that we do. And so as you're looking at your children, you know, the remote control, man, that should be on top of the fridge until their tasks are done. You want them to clean their room, brush their teeth in the morning? Awesome. I'd love for you to watch TV. As soon as your morning tasks are done, you can make that happen. The Now, it could be very easily you don't get TV because you didn't do your stuff. They don't understand what that means. They're children. They do not have the ability to think abstract until at least the age of 13. And so the whole idea of conscious parenting, getting down on their level and look them in the eyes and explain to them why you're taking their cell phone away, it doesn't work because all they hear is wah, 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 wah. I want my cell phone. Give me a plan to have my cell phone. Tell me what you want me to do. Don't just give me crayons. Give me crayons and show me exactly where you want me to color so I can make artwork that makes you happy too. I promise you from the bottom of my heart, no child ever wakes up in the morning going, how do I tick my mom off today? They wake (laughs) up in the morning going, oh, I have some things. Well, first of all, they wake up in the morning really with no thoughts other than there's a cartoon on today. (laughs) Okay, are you with me on this? And then it's your job to go, what is my goal? This is the last week, Parenting Path to Paradise, episode number one. What is my goal? What is my child's goal? And how do I make a plan to make it all click together? And that's what we do here at Creating Champions for Life. All right, so offer parent-approved choices, and you'll always get better results. All right, go ahead and introduce this one. All right. Now... We're talking about accelerators that helps you become a guiding behavior versus punishing behavior. Difference between smiles and frowns every single time. So I'm gonna show you the third accelerator for all note takers and people who love to interact. It's right there, it's called Kill the Dictator. (laughs) And If you could just be wide open to really take it objectively, not personal, we're talking about you, talking about us, telling them what to do, especially when they didn't even ask a question or for help. Telling somebody what to do is dictating. And how often does it take? One, two, three, maybe four or five dictations to you. Be like, excuse me, 
Who are you to tell me what to do? And so there's the opposition. So what is the opposite of dictating? Ooh, tick tock, tick tock. Does anybody want to put it into the comments? What's your best guess before you tell you what is the opposite of kill the dictator? Because killing the dictator is what's causing the friction. It's causing the rub. It's causing you to have a wedge between you and your genius offspring every single time. And it works perfectly. All right. I think some of us are getting the opposite is like, huh, well, if I can't tell you what to do, like put your shoes on, I'll give you a hint. Hey, what should, what should we be wearing to keep our feet dry? Cause it's raining outside. What would be the safest thing to go click with so we can be safer in the car? And which color socks would you like to wear today versus here, put your socks on? Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm starting to see a little ding, 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 ding. That's right. Ask questions versus dictating. This is a massive accelerator to guiding behavior versus punishing mm -hmm. behavior. Absolutely. And there's a good book out there. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And contrary to popular belief, children are not some sort of different species that we have to find <laughs> ways to like manipulate their behavior. They're little human beings just like you and just like me. They're goal oriented. They want to please you. They have a desire to be more, do more. They have a desire to be just like you. But when we control every move they make, they kind of go into this box and they become these little balls of anger. They feel like their life has no meaning or no purpose. They feel like they can't do anything without you. And they become this different human being than what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be this flourishing a spirit that grows and expands and learns all, all this exciting things to learn in, in this world. Okay. I want to read from Daniela. My child always wants something, but he never gives back. This is the, this is creating champions for life at its, at its heart and soul. Okay. Like I said, in the beginning, my children were lavished with every single physical thing under the sun and I could be dying of a heart attack and they would be playing on their cell phone video games instead of calling 911, I swear to God. Okay. So I, so I've lived what you're living through. They're not motivated. To, the, children will never pay you back. They don't think the same way that you do. And this is parenting uh, path to paradise. Number one, where we talked about the two extremes, you're in this world and they're in this world. And how do you bring the two worlds together? Um, stop giving him all these things. Don't don't drive him. You don't owe him a ride to his friend's house. You don't owe them television or Wi-Fi. You don't owe them a cell phone. You do not owe them designer clothes. You don't owe them brown sugar for their oatmeal in the morning. You can give them oatmeal with some fruit, but you don't owe them brown sugar. Now, that might be a little much that for you to handle. I'm just making a point here that we owe our children some basic food, some Value Village hand-me-down clothes, and a cot in their room with a blanket on it. That's what we owe them. If they want anything above that, they want designer shoes, like, you know, Nike shoes for gym class or whatever. Anything above basic food, clothes, and shelter is a privilege that your child would love a plan to work towards. How can he earn a ride to his friend's house, right? Um, how can he earn his own scooter? The reason why they come to you, buy me a scooter, take me to the movies, do this, do that, is because they have been trained that you are their way to make things happen. They've not been trained, hey, that's called a goal, let's make a plan, let's take some action, persevere through some obstacles, build some character, struggle just a little bit on your own. Let, let's see that you do that because that's the only way that number one, a child can gain confidence is by persevering through obstacles and succeeding. <gasps> look at me, look what I did. Has your child ever done that? Mommy, mommy, look, look, look at the picture I did. Mommy, look at what I did. They would love to please you. They want goals. They need plans. And, and you need to let them struggle a little bit because they're just a human being who wants to be just like you. And you don't owe him any of this stuff, Daniela. But if he wants to earn it, you can make a plan for him to earn it. Like take the recycling out when the recycling is supposed to go out. Do that every week for four weeks. Then ask me for a ride. Like seriously, 
tough love is great. And I, I, I'm telling you, what, I've been doing this now. I've met Tom in 2011, really started engaging in 2012, 13. Um, when I was like, oh my gosh, every single parent needs to know about this, but I had no idea how to write a book, how, how to bring it to you. We've learned a lot of things in this past 10 years. But one thing I will tell you is that all four of my children from 17 to 24, um, have I have the most, most loving, connected, respectful, uh, grateful children in the world. And this is what I wish for all of you. And it was from learning, creating champions for life, doing things that were a little bit out of my comfort zone, like earning garlic, garlic bread with dinner was a privilege. And if they did their school week that day, they could come have outstanding dinner. If they didn't do the school week, a uh, school work that day, then they could have basic dinner. And so I'm just going to share this really quickly and we'll wrap up today. Uh, but it, Jacob was about 15 when uh when he showed up for dinner one day and i said oh here's your spaghetti and a glass of water and he was like but i want garlic bread and i'm like garlic bread's for outstanding like this is when you get your school work done you you can have garlic bread oh my gosh he was 15 he acted like a two-year-old he banged his head on the on the stairs uh, i remember just like yesterday he was crying and banging his head because he didn't get the garlic bread I just stuck to my guns. It was part of the plan. It was all proactive. It wasn't punishment. He knew in advance what the plan was going to be. And he made a decision to test me. So he showed up. I maintained integrity. This is for you. You can earn your garlic bread. And the next day, he actually did all his schoolwork. And a couple of months later, he went and took the bus in Seattle. We're from Canada. He took the bus to go write his exam and got home and went, you know what, mom? I actually am smart. And that's all I needed for him to know, because once your child knows I actually am smart, I actually do have purpose. There is a, a meaning for my life. That's where they find their authentic happiness. They find themselves. So now they can go graduate from high school, not to please me, not because they had to, not because it was the home rules, but because he chose to. And then he went and off and got a good job, not because I made him to made him, but because he chose to. And this is how parenting becomes super, super exciting. So you want to wrap up? Oh, yeah. Could, could you imagine? Oh, wait. We have some people that might want to share some things here, too. Yes, absolutely. Just real quick. Could you imagine you being like Jacob when you only work 30 hours out of the week instead of 40 and you started banging your head on the on the, uh, on the the stairs going, but I want more money. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so when you start thinking about the plan. This is going to be a razor's edge. We won't go too deep, but plant the seed with you. You can't tell them or ask them what the plan is that you do to have a car. So you have that privilege to drive where you would like to go versus walk or take the bus. You see, the secret always lies from day one when they picked you as a trusted advisor. Show me the plan that you do as a big kid. Give me full disclosure so I know what it is because that's why they asked you and picked you as a trusted advisor. Give that to me and believe that I can learn, yep. but I don't have a clue how to get started. And that's why show me versus tell me activates monkey see monkey do. And that's how we all started walking on two legs. Oh, um, Eileen. Yeah, for sure. Like if you, yeah, you, we don't want to go into our kid's room and cause Armageddon by like, they come home from school and the room's empty. Hey, we're going to start bare minimum. You're going to earn all your privileges. You're right. It would cause world war three in your home, but there is a starting point. And the starting point is just becoming aware. I always, always taught that awareness was the first law of learning it is the key to greatness becoming aware and then the second law of learning is repetition 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 engage in our content you know book a block of time with us let's set up a customized game plan for you a starting place because if we work with you and we lock arms we can walk you through step by step where to begin and how to begin implementing so that within 90 days to a year your whole world will transform you're trust me i mean we used to have the the kids friends would come over and go i wish i could earn things my mom and dad just tell me no can you talk to our parents can you talk to our parents <laughs> we get this all the time can you teach my parents how to speak kid because because they yelled at me earlier today and i kind of want to move out they don't understand why they're being yelled at 
kids are just kids trying to navigate the world just like you are. And they're, you know, they are looking for, well, they're looking for you to be on their side. They're looking mm -hmm. for a partner. They're looking for a mentor. They need you to be the mentor. We can't judge them. And, you know, oh, I don't like the, I don't like what you're wearing. Go change. You know, oh, you're wearing too much perfume. You smell like a hooker or stripper. As my dad used to say, I guess my dad used to know strippers because he knew what they smelled like, but that didn't make me feel very good. Right. And so it's just beca about becoming aware. Um, so yeah, your son's 15. We're going to have to work through that together um, a little bit. So go ahead and send us a message if you're ready for that. And I love this. All of our clients are like, my son's asking if he did all of his morning stuff, could he have a donut with his breakfast? You'll have to talk to Tom about that. <laughs> um, um, Don, Don said, I used to get out of bed in the morning at the thought of eating cereal for breakfast, like a yummy cereal. Absolutely. Um, and then Eve, Thank you for joining us, Eve. This is rock, uh, world changing. It's rocking your world for sure. My winter for today is my five-year-old did his copy, his copy work before breakfast, then decided he wanted to help me make a yummy breakfast. So he made scrambled eggs, turkey sausage, and toast with butter. He did amazing for the whole family, and I could see him light up by his feeling um, of being, uh, his feeling so accomplished. Thank you for helping me teach him versus tell him. Yeah, that's amazing. Each and every one of you can have this amazing success with your children when we start seeing the world from their perspective and we start guiding behavior in joy and love instead of any type of punishment. So do any of my guests here that are live? Hi, Sean. Welcome. There's so many of you here. I, I didn't say all of your names, uh, but Chrissy, Celine, I can't see you. Don, do you have something to share? Yep. Awesome. Just unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, in my comments, I had mentioned that the goal we're working on this week is kind of, I'm getting tired of hearing myself being a nag in the morning to come on, get out of bed, get out of bed, you know, half hour goes by. And, and uh, so we have a goal right now that after a full week, five school days, um, if, if they're getting up and out of bed on their own without me nagging them, just with the alarm clock, then they will get to pick their own cereal at the grocery store because um, they don't like, they don't like the cereals that are in the cupboard and or any of the breakfast items. So they'll get to just pick whatever they want. And then if they do it after two weeks, um, I'll let them, we'll go on Amazon and they can choose their very own alarm clock. So. Ooh, are you guys excited about that? Yeah. Do you like having your own goals? Do you like working towards mm -hmm. things? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's how it starts. Kind of. <laughs> that's the first step to your genius. It's like this. It, it, when you first bring it out, it's like, oh my gosh, I'd love for you to have 10 minutes on my phone. What do you need to, what do you need to do to put a smile on mom's face? And they excitedly like help and work and they feel so good and everything's good. And yeah. Then a little while it's like wait a minute you yeah bed for me now i need to make my bed wait a minute i used to be able to just watch tv can't we just go back to the way it used to be where you did everything and paid for everything and made all my decisions for me can't we just go back to that yeah and here's the thing i used to say to my children all the time i was like you know what I worked my whole life to give you guys a good life i love you guys so much but now i realize that doing that is basically feeding the victim inside of you like it's 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 uh grow it's not helping you grow into a human being and so my job is to teach you life skills and prepare your you for life and i refuse to continue to do what i know is hurting you even though you want me to think for you and pay for everything for you would you like to have control over your own life and would you like to be able to go to the movies and buy things on your own one day without me and a hundred percent of the time, what do you think they answered? Would you guys like your mom to control every decision that you make? Or would you like to be in more control of your life, but have to earn some things? Do you want to be in more control of your life? Yeah. And be able to, to earn your own things? Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Kind yeah. of. It, it it destroys my case of you doing everything for me, mom. But yeah, I really would like to earn some things on my own. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for sharing. I'm proud of you guys. You have some goals that you're working towards. It's amazing. Welcome to the world. <laughs> Welcome to what life's really like. 
and I would high five you. I would hug you if I could or high five you, but, but thank you for sharing. Was there anything else you wanted to share? Did you guys want to share anything else? No, no that's but it for today. Thank, thank you for coming and for showing your faces. <laughs> I love seeing your beautiful faces. All right. Anyone else? Chrissy, would you like to share? Yeah. All right. Hi, welcome. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, so one thing I'd just like to share is um, my daughter, Olivia, this week, she earned her own money to buy her own clothes that she wanted to choose um, shopping online. So she picked out what she wanted online, added it to her cart, and, um, you know, I showed her how to do it all on her own, her own purchase online. So she was really excited about, you know, being like me and buying her own things online with her own money. And she was just so excited and, you know, feeling so good about herself. Like, look what I did. So just want to share that. Yeah, it's super yeah. powering. So for all the people that are new that are watching, Christine, can you share just in like 60 seconds the basis of what life was like before with your two preteens, 12 and 13 mm -hmm. year old daughters, and then what life is like now? Oh, so before, <laughs> um, whew, very difficult. Um, a lot of chaos, anger, um, depressed, no motivation, just kind of, um, you know, really, really dark and not feeling like our future was looking too good at the moment. Um, so I've been with the program for a year and in, we have a long ways to go, of course. Um, but after a year, we have made such a huge turnaround in, um, in our relationship with our girls, our relationship and their joy has come back. Um, their motivation, their joy, their excitement, their happiness, and spending more time together, cooperation, um, and, you know, helping, obviously, it's helped me with my awareness and obviously what I was doing um, to cause everything going back um, and just starting off one thing at a time, baby steps for all the things that I had to go back and um, fix. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's um, been an amazing journey so far and we're still um, every day, every day is a new journey in our day and um, it's just been really amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that is so, amazing and I, there's nothing else there's nothing else out there like creating champions for life when mm. i first met tom thank you for sharing i'm gonna take you off the screen um but yeah when i first met tom i mean i had read all the parenting books i had watched super nanny i tried watching it as much as i could so i could you know do what was best for my kids um and then when i met tom and he was like oh that's called a goal and then i thought oh my gosh i've been in personal development i had at the time for 18 years and the number one thing that I was taught even way back at 21 or 22 when I was selling Kirby vacuum cleaners was that you have to have a goal. And that was the first time I'd ever learned about setting goals and how to set goals and how to create a vision for my life was when I became an adult and there was nothing out there for parents. And so when I met him and he was like, that's called a goal, I thought, uh, like it just, it went, Bree, there's something new I've never heard about in parenting. And so I did my due diligence. I did a bunch of research. I looked, and I still for the last 10 years, I've looked for any type of parenting that teaches parents that food, clothes, and shelter is a basic, everything else is a privilege that your child can set goals and you make the plan. There's nothing else out there in the whole planet. But the thing is, is that if giving attention, if giving them an easy life, if getting on their level and making eye contact and explaining things to our children, if these things actually worked to empower them to rise up, then we would be in a completely different world today. 
It's like one out of four children are being diagnosed with ADHD. Almost every one of those children eventually get diagnosed as well with oppositional defiant disorder. There's sensory processing disorder. There's conduct disorder. I mean, there's so many disorders going on and mental health issues going on that if all of this coddling stuff actually worked, we wouldn't be seeing a rise every year in um, medications and everything else for children, which you don't need. You don't need to medicate your children. We need to teach them life skills. They need to learn focus and responsibility. And they need to learn what respect looks like. They need to learn all of these characteristics that you would want. They need to learn through through life. So Sean, I'm going to bring you on and you can share your story. Sean um, came to us with her 20 year old and i think you're making some headway there yeah how's it going we are the relationship has improved um you know it's interesting because daniele was talking about the getting up and we i struggle with that with him um because there's nothing really motivating him to you know get up he just gets up <laughs> middle of the day um but i i would say there's a lot to complain about there's a lot you know, things that are out of order, but yet there's the relationship has improved as far as my ability to communicate to him and to inspire him to do something that he hasn't been doing or he otherwise would just ignore or think, you know, well, I don't have to show up for that. I don't have to do that. The other night was case in point. Um, I said, well, the, the dishes need to be done. He says, well, those are your dishes. I said, well, you ate my food. <laughs> and, you know, he kind of grinned at me and he went over and he did the dishes. So, but when I'm thinking about these things that aren't being done, um, I'm catching myself more now and not dictating or complaining about what he's not doing. And if I don't have anything at the moment for my own peace and tranquility, I just, you know, just like, okay, put that on the shelf. I'll, I'll need to figure something else out, you know, for the next time it shows up or that I can present to him in a way that's going to uh, communicate wisdom that he gets, you know, and we can be on the same page doing it. But I would say in the last two months, um, it's better definitely better. The relationship is better. There's more re mutual respect and cooperation going on. And last, you know, last night when I was on a group call, um, I was having difficulty with my reception. So I had to go to a place where he was and I was a little bit sketchy on doing that. But, I, you know, it, it because I felt like he would be offended or, or something, of that nature that it wouldn't come across in a positive way and he would possibly feel like you know well you know what is she what is she doing you know i'm not a kid i'm i'm an adult but it wasn't like that at all in fact i right afterwards he he came to where i was after the program had ended he picked up my coffee mug he had his plate in his hand and he took it to the sink and then you know he asked me he asked me for something and I says, well, how about if you start my, my tea and I'm going to go up and get ready for bed and whatever is there, you know, to finish up in, in the sink, do that. And, and he did, he didn't question it. He did, he did it. Um, so awesome. I'm looking forward. Yeah. yeah. It's so freeing mom who's watching this. Like, isn't it Sean? Like, isn't it so freeing? to be able to lay out a plan and then just choose to love them anyway, no matter what they choose. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I can relate to Daniela too, you know, about being big, about there is so much and needing baby steps because it's going to upset him. And, and I get that. And I think, I think for me, I have to feel, you know, where, what's his comfort zone because I think we can sometimes make too many demands even with the plan you know that's it's just too much at once and so that's just a matter of me learning um you know he can't he you know he can't do the two 200 mile yet <laughs> or the 200 yard yet 
No, um, Rome was not built in a day. There you go. And so if we've got 10 year olds, 15 year olds, 20 year old children, it, some of them, I mean, we had a client come because she had a 45 year old son who would come over with his children and he wouldn't even take the shoes off at the door. And so she'd ask him to take the shoes off. And he's like, that's why we have linoleum floors. So we don't have to at 45 years old. So she hired us to be able to have some mm -hmm. tools to deal with her 45 year old and her grandchildren. I'm mean, guys, your children are never going to leave. They're going, they're going to leave. They're, maybe they go party. Maybe they go do this. Maybe they leave for a week or a month or six mm -hmm. months or a year. Right. They're going to come back. And when they mm -hmm. come back, you want to have a master plan that frees you from attachment mm -hmm. of their results where you can actually help them with their life and who they're supposed to be. Create yeah. a master plan so that you can help them. And Sean, you're kind of in that position right now where you have basically put your foot down and said, hey, you know what? I'll help you. Uh, I'll help you. But mm -hmm. we're going to be doing some things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And that's where we can, yeah, just let them, let them be bare minimum and just mm -hmm. love them anyway, but, mm -hmm. and don't come in and overcompensate. Oh, this was a thought that I had. Sometimes we, and this is our belief level. Oh, my child had, we went through a divorce or there's so much trauma that they've mm -hmm. gone through that I just, I just don't think that they can. And, and I want to catch you there because Thoughts become things. Yeah. And the more we come in and we overcompensate and we coddle, ooh, you know, you've had some trauma and we're going to have to fix this or whatever. Right. The more you're actually breathing life into the victim inside of your child. It yeah. is so counterintuitive. But when you go, I believe in you. I believe you can get up in the morning. Yeah. I believe you can get a job and go to work. I believe you can do more. And you actually instead of lowering the bar to overcompensate for a child you think may be traumatized we raise the bar and we believe more and we mm -hmm. actually give them more responsibility and they will rise up it's so amazing this is human psychology mm -hmm. this is the power that we have as parents we can either smother their growth their emotional quotient by doing too much being too much giving too much or we can rise the bar and expect more yes yeah. you believe in your child that they can step up and do more and be more they will believe more in their capabilities but if they've had 10 15 20 years where you've done everything and been there everything they honestly inside of their soul do mm -hmm. not believe that they can live and succeed without you mm -hmm. Uh, this is just such power. What a powerful conversation. We could talk all day, but we've been an hour. We're going to wrap up today. Do you have any closing thoughts, Sean? You know, just some, the, the complain thing has just been because, you know, instead of complaining, we, we have to recognize that that complaining is an attention of a, of a skill, not there or yep. who doesn't want to. So they're, you know, create the right environment, ask questions, uh, uh, you know, to inspire. But for me, because I battle with that myself, <laughs> you know, things I don't like, that complaining spirit, that complaining attitude. And and I I have a new a new understanding about the word complain that mm. it's there because it's wanting us, we're not seeing something plain. <laughs> you know, something's missing. Something's missing. So so you know come come to the plane of the of uh what's missing and um and we all have it it's it's in us if we don't get caught yeah. up in that whirlwind of a complaining uh emotional spiral yeah, yeah it's our it's our job to teach our children resilience and strength mm -hmm. of character mm -hmm. and we're all going to go through trauma like we're all going to have things happen to us mm -hmm. so now what are we going to do about it do we lay in our bed and have a pity party and tell right. everybody how horrible our life is right. or do we make a plan, set a new goal and get up every day and keep on keeping on? Yes. And so some of us as adults don't have these life skills. So maybe you need a coach. You need some some help, some somebody to lock arms with you so we can mm -hmm. be that confidence for mm -hmm. you in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I really believe I've had I've had now. Um, oh, my God. 
Well, when I met Tom, I had 18 years of personal development. So that must mean I have 28 years of personal development <laughs> behind me. Just, I'm just realizing how many years, 28 years of personal development. And we all have a choice to make every single morning, right? We all have a choice. Every single one of us could lay on the couch and feel sorry for ourselves. We all have reasons why to do that. Yeah. But the more you develop yourself personally, and I believe creating champions for life is the absolute best personal development program in a parenting box, if that makes sense, because yeah. <laughs> you're going to grow. You're going to learn how to set your own goals, how to rise above, how mm -hmm. to be solution and goal oriented, mm -hmm. how to become a more um, empowered human being. And mm -hmm. so you can become more than your children can become more too. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So that's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you everybody for being here, for watching us live, whatever platform you're on. If you need a copy of the PDF comment, I need a copy below this video and I'll make sure to message you and get you a copy. If you need help creating a customized game plan, let's get on that. Put a comment below the video saying, I need help. I need a customized game plan. And we'll reach out to you with a message. We'll get on the phone and we'll start making you a game plan that you can start um, start creating champions, guiding behavior versus punishment. So until we meet again. That's right. So let's all jump in. If you know oh, the wait. lingo. I'm going to unmute everybody that's here there that can go. do this with us. Uh, I'm going to bring you all on. I forgot to do this last week, but I meant to do this last week. <laughs> and there's one that even if you're not connected, so I'm not going to invite you on. But here we go. All right. So. We'll do this on the count of three. One, two, three. Until we, we meet, meet again. again. Here's our oh, parenting success. Our parenting success. Bye for now, everybody. Bye. For now. Bye.